Hi, I'm Deacon Greg Lawton, the Minister of Spiritual Formation here at Jackson First United Methodist Church, and this is our Food for Thought for Monday, April 19th, 2021. When I first arrived last summer, I did a Food for Thought based on spiritual formation, since that's in my title. I wanted to make it clear about what my primary responsibilities were going to be. Today, I'd like to offer a little further insight on what we mean by spiritual formation. There are many ways to be formed in faith. The first way might be called information. There are things we need to learn about being faithful in our Christian practice. We need to learn the Bible. We need to learn from the examples of others. We need to learn what our particular group of Christians says about the Bible and faith. We need to learn the do's and don'ts, the where's and when's, and the how's and why's of practicing faith in community and on our own. This summer, we will be offering a small group book study on Adam Hamilton's resource called Making Sense of the Bible. It is a great introduction to what the Bible is and isn't, and offers some ways we might more faithfully approach it. United Methodists don't tend to read the Bible literally, but we take it seriously. So there are ways to read that are more helpful in our common dialogue. I hope you can join a group for this study, or, or at least follow Pastor Tanya's sermon series on those Sundays. It will start in June. One great way to gather information about the church is to pay attention to everything that happens during Sunday worship, not just the sermon and prayers and music. Nearly everything that happens, from the colors displayed to the music chosen, to the candle lighting, to the order of the service itself, has a meaning and a purpose. If paying attention to the details doesn't immediately reveal their purpose, feel free to ask. It's one of those no dumb questions moments. I welcome your comments and your questions about what's happening and the things we just take for granted and see all the time. Another way we build our faith can be called formation. This refers to our many practices of faith. We are formed during worship during our, during our personal moments of devotion or prayers, and by our participation in church activities and in holy conversations. We can be formed by others, and we can form ourselves through interpreting the events around us. This kind of formation can occur both in our conscious and our subconscious thinking. It can even be muscle memory, since our bodies learn and remember, too, just like our brains do. Just ask anyone raised Roman Catholic about when to cross themselves during worship. In the United Methodist Church, we sometimes speak about the Wesleyan quadrilateral, a fourfold way of understanding the world around us through faith. We are encouraged to be formed by scripture, as presented in the Holy Bible, by tradition, as practiced by the denomination and presented in our Book of Discipline, by reason as formulated from our own intellect when considering all other sources of knowledge, and by Christian experience as our lived faith tells us what is good and best, enlivened by the Holy Spirit. This kind of formation is not intended to be a once and done kind of thing, but an opportunity to grow and change throughout our lives. A third way to be formed in faith can be called transformation. This is the stated goal and hope the Apostle Paul shares in Romans 12. The second verse of that chapter says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. What do you think Paul means by that? I think he means that through rational thinking, and applying what we learn through the methods available to us, we might live meaningful and faithful lives, the kinds of lives that God wants each of us to live, the kinds of lives that change what it means to be alive. Transformation can come when we place ourselves willingly in a place beyond our comfort and familiarity. This might be an encounter with someone outside of our social circle, 
through giving of ourselves in mission and service, or engaging in a new practice of faith. We have two such, perhaps unusual, events on the horizon. The National Day of Prayer is on Thursday, May 6th, and we've been invited to participate in two efforts to publicly pray. Most people rank public speaking among their biggest fears. Praying aloud is right up there with them. But it, it is certainly one way to show your faith. So on, Matt, on Saturday, May 1st, we will walk a section of the city as part of a city-wide prayer walk. We'll meet at Premier Eye Care on North Wisner at 1 p.m. to walk the block bounded by Wisner, Ganson, West, and Michigan, stopping to pray for the people who live in those neighborhoods and the businesses there. This is open to people of all ages, and I hope many of you are able to come. I suspect we'll find ice cream afterward. On Thursday, May 6th, people will gather at Greenwood Park, or Austin Blair Park, there on Jackson Street in downtown, to read scripture aloud together between the sounding of a shofar horn. The hope is to read the entire Bible in a half hour, with many voices reading different passages. It happens at noon, which may limit participation, but I hope some of us are brave enough to give it a try. If you've done this in the past, I'd love to hear from you about your experience there. And if you're not ready yet to be out in public with a group of people, I could provide scripture passages for you to read at home at the same time when the group is meeting in the park. Let me know if you're interested in any of that. I hope today that we may all find ways to be informed, formed, and transformed by the Spirit of God, today, through the springtime, and for our lives together. And may God bless you and show you the depth of love offered for each of us. Amen.